Hello guys, welcome back. This is of course Aprilia and today I want to talk about this AI image generator known as Focus, which is essentially the closest thing you can have to a one-click installation of Stable Diffusion. And yes, they do also have a web version in case you want to use it, but this is essentially the most user-friendly way to use Stable Diffusion in your own computer. It doesn't require a lot of coding or any type of prior knowledge. It's basically one click install and then you can start with prompting. So let's kind of look into Focus, which to my understanding is some type of a variation or fork of Automatic 11.11. In case that's not true, please let me know in the comment section below. But in case you have used Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 interface, it's quite similar to that. And basically there are certain things and design choices that have been made in Focus, which makes it a bit different from the experience of Automatic 11.11. And it comes along with inbuilt models and also the SDXL. So it's basically made for the newer version. I think that is the Stable Diffusion 1.5 and upwards. And so it's not really supporting like LoRa's who are much older. And yeah, actually here they say the algorithm of Automatic 11.11, but there has been some adjustments here and it works out quite similar fashion. And there is also the online version, which to me actually is, I mean, $10 a month is not the most cheapest thing to be in, in my honest honesty, because there's probably a lot of limitations on what exactly can it run on the web version in case you want to access like certain specific LoRa's and things like that, which is kind of like the idea here compared to like mid journey. And you can download the code here from their GitHub. I'm going to leave a link down below with everything and here are actually, well, that doesn't matter. So this is the interface. It looks out very, very simple. You just paste in here and it starts prompting. Obviously you will be needing a pretty decent GPU to basically start running here. Um, I'm just going to be doing a very, very simple prompt here. Um, a girl listening to music with her headphones. Hey, well, high quality 4K. And that's going to be my first prompt here. And this is basically how fast you can basically get started out with running out the prompts. And here on the background, we have the code going on and everything. And in terms of like going back a bit about the installation, it's just simply when you have the file, it basically downloads a bunch of stuff. The overall size might be around, mm, I want to say 10 gigabytes perhaps for all the models and things. So make sure you have some space lined up and it comes along with three different models. You have the basic, which we are running now, the run.bat, and then there's the anime and realistic. So in case you want to prompt anime, launch that one. And if you want to run like realistic stuff, run that. You can change these within the actual program as well. And here are some of the end results, which actually look pretty decent. Um, realistic footage here, we have kind of weird finger movement here, whatever. But in case you're thinking about, well, I want to actually alter our things. You just hit that advanced and then this sidebar will basically manifest here and it will allow you to do many different things. One of the things is here, which is not on the automatic 11.11. Those are the things I want to talk about first. What are the differentiation here? So the performance is here at first. So we have quality and speed. Speed basically means that there's 30 steps and quality, I believe, is 45 or is it 60 actually? So we can do the same prompt with quality now and it will basically take me a longer time to basically prompt it out, but you can see it actually manifesting here in real time and start doing things. On the other drop bar, you have the aspect ratios. Now there isn't some key aspect ratios here like 16 at nine and nine at 16. Those are very generic and important aspects you can alter these at the notepad file however however i was not able to get those to work when i was editing on the notepad and i tried to add these custom fields and maybe if the developers are watching this video right now please consider actually adding out those two aspect ratios because those are important so there's a bunch of aspect ratios which are very random here two to one is obviously very default and here's the quality version and as you can see there is you know, we could definitely see it's a bit more sharper looking footage. 
Um, so that's kind of the different. There's also extreme speed, which probably will be doing it. On, and here you can adjust how many images you don't want, want it to create. So let's say we want three images. We want them on JPEG. Web, WebB is the most compromised format. So let's try the extreme speed here and what we're actually going to be getting. On the style, you can have different filters, which will basically affect these things. And here you can skip and stop in case you just don't want to do things all together. I mean, these are actually not too bad looking either. But let's try them twist it out the image a bit and like add some weird flavor here. Let's say I want to be more fantasy style of an image. And you can leave these three at the at the play. I think those are pretty good. Let's see how it basically starts to change. So there's a lot of these existing presets here, which are going to be altering out the image. You can add quite many of these where you can add many, many different. This is not quite fantasy just yet. Let's go back to speed and let me go on to generate once more. Let's see if the style starts to drastically change now into more unrealistic. Here on the model page, you can actually access different models. You can actually import custom models here. So you're not stuck with the two default ones, which is Juggernaut Excel, which is by the way, really good Excel model. And then we have Playground. And I believe the third one that comes along with this is the realistic stock photo. And maybe these SDLX basin refiners also come in. And there are a bunch of LoRa's which I also have downloaded. So you can choose the LoRa's here and you can add the weights. Okay, the minus means that it's trying to do something that is totally different from the LoRa reference. And the weight higher is going to be creating something that's more closer to the actual LoRa. So here you can see the image has now drastically changed. But because we are using Juggernaut, it's not changing it too drastically. But let's go into Anima Pencil, which is actually one of these default models here. You can also use refiners. And these are, I mean, there's pretty much clear instructions here what it can basically do in terms of like, do you want it to, for anime models, it's 0 0.8. I guess we're going to be doing anime art right now. So let's go with that. And there is also advanced tab guidance scale how artistic it's going to be, and then the image sharpness. How sharp is the image going to be? And also you have to see on the actual thing here, has it basically loaded out the new model? Because sometimes when you're loading it, it might take a bit of time. Um, and then lastly, one of the things that it comes along with is actually the input stuff, which are already on automatic 11.11. So basically you can upscale an existing image, vary an existing image, and basically you can inpaint. So you can peel up an image here and like, you know, paint it over and fix certain parts of an existing image as well. So we can, I'm going to show that as the last thing here on the video. So I'm going to be going into the actual outputs. And we're going to be picking 7030. Here's all the images we have prompted out today. So I'm going to be probably taking one of those images and we're going to be doing something different with that. So overall, like I really like the quality and the thing, all the, the one thing about what I like about is, is with this one is frankly, the fact that there's a lot of issues that I ran into with automatic 1111. There was glitches. I didn't get this and this and that working. There was errors. There were a lot of settings like clip skip and all these things. And these can be quite intimidating and you may not understand them as, as an individual, like, you know, who is coming into this space and have no prior knowledge. I mean, these are not actually too bad images, a bit of a low quality on the eyes, but basically we would add more things there, but whatever. Let's take a one image here and we're going to paste it here and we're going to be doing in painting. So if you want to alter out an image, which didn't turn out in certain parts that look kind of bad. So here in this context, it's the actual arm. We're going to change that all together. And actually we should change back into the model we were using earlier, which is juggernaut, this to none, and then going into generate. And now it should basically do an in painting out of it and do alterations based on the area that we highlighted. So 
basically it can do post image processing here and it can do pretty good prompts with good quality because it's using those SDXL and the later versions of the stable diffusion technology underneath. So that's why I really like Focus. I don't, I haven't really looked back into automatic 1111, not going back there. And then there's the, another one that's very popular. I can't remember the name top of my head. A lot of people are using that, but that is also very tech savvy. So I, I kind of like to have something that I have some creative control over, but also I, I can like, you know, have something that doesn't break off and break down every single time that I'm interacting with it. So as you can see here, it's basically altering out the fingers here and giving out different variations. And that's basically how the in-painting works out. There's also a describe feature in case you want to have some prompts. You have an image, but you don't know exactly what it should be called and things like that. So that also helps out. And then there's metadata as well. But it basically has, I think, almost every single feature that the normal automatic 1111 has, but it has something or, or there might be a couple of things that it might be missing in terms of settings and some small tweaks. But this is the most easiest way to basically run this, this whole thing. And you don't have to download this plugin, the Pythons and everything. This will do everything for you on basically a one-click installation. But that's basically my review of Focus. I'm looking forward to seeing more updates on it. And maybe I think the most biggest negative is the aspect ratio stuff. And there's also a negative prompt, which are not needed, by the way, as once you put out the advanced tab, there is no negative prompts here. It's only on the advanced tab. So these are not needed. They kind of use their own stuff on the, on the under the hood. So you don't need to have negative prompts when you're prompting with focus. But hey, in case you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have a recommendation what we should be reviewing next, I'm all ears. Leave a comment down below. And yeah, I will be seeing you guys on the next time, on the next time on next video. Cheers.